This is uh, the jungle. It's an unofficial uh, refugee and migrants camp. First came to the jungle in Calais two months ago. And we got towards the entrance and we saw loads of bodies and loads of people. I didn't really have words for quite a long time. I walked with Joe for about a couple of hours and found the most incredible and at the same time most awful situation happening right here, an hour from Paris and an hour from King's Cross. The police and the government have allowed people to set up a shanty town and given them some incredibly basic services. There aren't enough toilets, there aren't enough taps, there aren't any facilities for washing, there's no electricity. The only plumbing is flowing water, there's no drainage, there's no sewerage. What you have is, is a refugee camp where the living standards and the sanitary standards are below a lot of other refugee camps in the world, in you know, some of the poorest, most conflicted areas of the world. There are many, many different nationalities of people gathered here. Sudanese, Iraqi, Syrian, Iranian, Afghanistan, and more to the point, there's a sense of community, um, despite differences um, of where people have come from. Horrible living conditions, a terrible situation for thousands of people, and at the same time, this incredible and amazing sense of hope and optimism and belief that something will be better in the future. Our impression of the people here and the situation was quite different to our preconceptions. Mm. We found that everyone wanted to talk and tell their yeah. stories. Yeah. So we, we thought a space where people could do that, that would be safe for the winter and warm. We're currently in quite a strange theatre. We call it a theatre, but it serves many different purposes. It's across all art forms and it's, it's sort of a town hall. On a really basic level, we have to have a place where we can reflect upon our situation. Sometimes churches can provide that, sometimes mosques can provide that. But this space is open to all, all nationalities, all genders. There is no judgment, it is completely open. You can sit, you can draw, you can write, you can talk, you can share, you can sing, you can dance. So we start the day early in the morning. We clean and sweep up, sweep everything out, and then we'll go into a writing workshop that will maybe last an hour and a half. In the evenings, we have rap battles and spoken word to um, poetry readings to a disco on a Saturday night. We've then had about two or three hours of an artist, Chav, who come, who's come in with blank canvases. People can come in and make that square their own. They're now all over the walls. People come in here all the time when it's more of an open space and when there's not structured workshops going on to play music and to sing. And I think that's what's so magical is that the basics of food and water and shelter are important, obviously, but you have to go beyond that and let people have a space where they can be human, where they can laugh, where they can be positive, where they can be happy, where they can forget about where they are. <laughs> didn't expect to end up in a theatre. I didn't come here to do artsy-fartsy bollocks. I came here to fix stuff and I built a house, I helped build a school. Um, the stuff I've seen going on here is beyond, beyond my capacity to, to explain or to describe. The need for expression and the need to view yourself in a slightly different way, from a different angle, to, to come to terms with, with who you are, why you might be here, that is as important as food and shelter. There is no easy solution to this question. And all we're trying to do here in this space is try and communicate the humanity that exists here. The experience of art, of any level of art, is that it allows people to relax and it takes them away from the sense of where they are into a, a separate space. And although there's been a lot of happiness in this place, there's also a great deal of sadness. The only thing people need here, apart from a massive political shift, is houses and hope, and this is a massive beacon of hope, really. We built it here with the help of about 
a hundred people throughout the day just coming and yeah. so you build from the top and then sort of do layer by layer and by the end you know you have to have people all around the structure pushing it upwards yeah. till it's till it's as high as it is, yeah. it is now everyone being involved right from the start it's been it's been owned sort of communally by the community here um, that's really important to say is that this isn't this isn't owned by us the reason that that, that so many people come at night and during the day and filter in and out and feel safe in this place because it's theirs. Uh, there's no reason in the world that we couldn't put up a theatre here and that people here wouldn't love that. And that was sort of the, the idea behind the Good Chance space, a space where people can tell their stories safely and warmly and openly.